Good morning. My name's Dion. I'm trained as an architect and I work at Lendlease. We do large vertical construction projects and we receive lots of IFCs. We also write a lot of custom software to audit IFCs, edit IFCs, and also create new IFCs. We also work very closely with other technologies like BCF, IDS, Brick Schema, and more. And the way we work with IFCs is a little different to most companies. Most companies use traditional proprietary BIM software. And if we're lucky, they'll press an import and an export button to translate the proprietary data into IFC. We call this traditional workflow translated open BIM. And there are lots of problems with this approach. It's slow, it's complex, and the translation process always has data loss. So the IFC is inferior to the proprietary data. In contrast, we started working with IFC natively. And this means that we have a variety of custom software that loads IFC without translations. We can edit that IFC, and when we do, only that portion of the IFC graph is modified. And instead of exporting, we can save only that portion without any data loss. And this native IFC approach now means that our IFC data is richer, more trustworthy, and more up-to-date than traditional or translated open BIM. I'd like to share with you one of the tools that you can try out right now to see what native IFC looks like. And this is known as the Blender BIM add-on. The Blender BIM add-on is a free, open source, native IFC authoring platform. It has capabilities ranging from authoring models, creating drawings, cost planning, and more. And I'd like to demonstrate some of these features, starting with opening, auditing, and analyzing models. So just like most IFC viewers, you can open models without any data loss. You can browse the spatial tree, view properties, quantities, classifications, system assignments, placement coordinates, and so on. And you can also view things not usually shown in other viewers, like a library of types, materials and style lists, or systems and subsystem breakdowns, or perhaps work schedules and tasks, or actors like manufacturers and suppliers. So everything in the interface shows IFC as it truly is. All the IFC terminology and jargon isn't renamed, simplified, or hidden. And this is really critical when we want to see exactly what our IFC data looks like. An important feature is running model audits. We use IDS for this, and you can view the results either directly in Blender or produce HTML, BCF, or spreadsheet reports. You can also run the IDS audit via code if you want to integrate automated model checking into your CDE. There are also features for comparing IFCs from one version to another. It compares both geometry as well as changes in properties and other relationships. And there's also an IFC-based clash detection system. If your IFC is translated from traditional BIM software, it comes with a Swiss Army knife of patching tools you can use to fix various common IFC problems. For example, if the coordinates are wrong or you don't use map conversion and projected CRS correctly, you can run a patch which will shift or rotate the placement or geometry coordinates. Or instead, you can run a query that extracts elements from a model and saves it out to a separate IFC. And we've got a query language inspired by IDS that lets you select things like all the fire-rated partition walls on level 2 or all the concrete slabs and so on. And you can also merge multiple IFCs together. And we have lots of recipes, including things like upgrading from 2x3 to 4, or common mistakes we find in IFCs that we've bundled as single-click fixes. We can also create schedules of data into things like Excel, CSV, ODS, or Pandas data frames. You can edit this data in the spreadsheet form and use it to bulk edit properties or other relationships in the IFC. And this includes changing not just simple things like properties, but even changing the IFC classes of objects. All of these utilities can be run either through a graphical interface, a command line, or as a programming library. And this means that you can run it manually or automated. So here's a quick example where we're mixing both programming and a graphical interface to extract a schedule of data. So let's create a schedule of all the rooms in the building, and here's what it looks like in a spreadsheet. And let's bulk edit this and turn it into a data center. And now let's load the data back into the IFC, and you can check with code to see that the model has been updated. And for really advanced users, we also include a built-in IFC debugger. So if you can imagine the built-in web inspector or console in web browsers, this is a bit like the IFC equivalent inspired by the tool in XBIM Explorer, but it has some new bells and whistles. You can navigate the IFC hierarchy, 
jump through inverse relationships, and select objects in 3D, or create sub-portions of the shape representation, or check placement matrices, polygon counts, and so on. And this is really good for spotting mistakes, like this really poor tessellation coming from non-native ISC software. So in this example, this single wheel has 60,000 polygons. Or this door, which is 27 times larger than it needs to be. Or this pump, which if you redid this pump in native ISC representations, it could be 35 times smaller. So let's see what model authoring looks like in ISC. And in this example, we're creating some ISC walls. These walls are created from an IFC wall type, which has a material layer set that defines the thickness of the wall. And the walls automatically join to one another using IFC Rail Connect's path. So if you move one wall, the other wall parametrically extends or snaps to it. Each wall has an extruded solid body representation, as well as an axis representation. The door is automatically generated using the door standard case properties. And the voiding relationship is also auto-generated from the profile geometry of the door. And the doors also have a plan view representation context for the door swing. The slab is defined using the rules of a standard case slab, so it uses an extruded index polycurve. And although Blender is a mesh-based software, because we're using IFC geometry natively, what you're seeing here are true arcs and true circles like those defined by IFC arc index and IFC circle. And what you'll really notice is that it's really not different from the tools that you already use. We're creating elements from a library of construction types using parametrically layered materials and standardized profiles. Using IFC as a native schema does not prevent integrations or extensions for highly parametric modeling. IFC already contains basic parametric doors, windows, layered and profiled elements like pipes and ducts and columns and so on. But we can also support more complex scenarios like parametric assets, stairs, roofs, and even visual scripting. Properties and quantities are easy to create and edit. We also have an implementation of IFC property set templates, which are a bit like shared parameters in Revit, so you can standardize property names, data types, and which elements they apply to. And as you might expect, there are also all the usual tools for editing materials, styles, managing types, spaces, containments, and so on. You can also have multiple people work collaboratively with IFC. So here's an incredible technical demonstration by Bruno Possel about IFC Git integration. So we have multiple people around the world collaborating on the same IFC model. Modifications can be visualized, and simultaneous changes to different and same parts of the model can be reconciled into a valid IFC graph. And there are a few other approaches to multi-user authoring. And in this scenario, this IFC is not loaded from a step.ifc file, but instead from a SQLite database. The user doesn't notice any difference, but multiple apps can connect to the same database at the same time. So here you can see the data updated live when edited in two sessions. The IFC OpenShell API also supports a separated client-server model, so you can have multiple people accessing the same data. So for example, this web app called IFC WorkZug is sending requests from the server from a browser. One of the lesser explored aspects of IFC is its capabilities for generating drawings. IFC has a concept of representation contexts. And contexts allow a single object to look differently in different situations, such as a door which is drawn as an open swing and plan compared to a closed door and section, or a different level of detail depending on the drawing scale. IFC also has an annotation class. In fact, in IFC2x3, there are a whole bunch of specialized classes for linear, angular, radius dimensions, or drafting callouts. And these classes have been reduced in IFC4, but all the core classes are still available, like annotations, product assignments, fill areas, text literals, and curve styles. IFC also supports documents. Drawings, schedules, and so on can be represented using IFC documents with document references. And if we combine these three incredible features, we can produce drawings like these. In this example, this is a popular Revit sample project translated into IFC, but then modified using native IFC to draw all the annotations. So all the grids, dimensions, labels, and so on are all created and stored here with native IFC. We can also completely start a project from scratch with IFC. So all these drawings were modeled and documented completely end-to-end -end with native IFC by the Opening Design Architecture Studio. 
So there are actually architects out there right now, modeling, documenting, rendering, and delivering projects just with IFC. These drawings are generated using SVG, another open data standard, and these allow people to actually change the styling of drawings at runtime with no special software required. So when you see something red, it knows it's because it's demolished and it's referencing a status property set in IFC. And it'll be a really fascinating future when we can generate and store preset interactive cuts of our models with purely open standards. Native IFC also supports structural analysis. It supports all the information you need to create analytical models with boundary conditions, load cases and combinations, and structural members. It can be linked to any structural engine you wish. And once the simulation is performed, the results and reaction forces can be stored back in the IFC. So in all these images, the structural analysis was performed using an open source software known as CodeAster, but there are other tools you can use. So for example, this Adapi software lets you use high-level code to describe structural IFC components. In this demonstration, we're looking at distribution system connectivity. IFC understands different system types and subsystems, and it knows when ports or different equipment can be connected to one another and what direction the distribution flow is going in. There are basic features already in place for creating and editing systems, ports, changing flow directions, and 3D modeling of segments and fittings. And for lighting engineers, we can use external surface style definitions and textures to do photometrically validated light simulation. So this image shows a light simulation of an IFC model. And these are not just regular surface shading styles. Every IFC element down to the blades of grass contain numeric photometric definitions measured from product samples. So you can see a comparison between the real life and the simulation, as well as a false color view. Native IFC also supports costing completely integrated into the model. It has formulas and derived quantities. And these cost schedules are not linked separately to the model. They're natively in the IFC itself. Scheduling can also be done in native IFC in a fully integrated manner. So there's no exports or linking. You can create calendars, work schedules, task dependencies, calculate critical paths, floats, early late dates, and record actual versus schedule. Naturally, we can also visualize progress or generate animations. So all these animations were generated directly from IFC. And as you update the model or the schedule, the animations automatically update alongside it. So in this excellent tutorial by Sigma Dimensions, you can see we're creating an availability calendar and a construction work schedule directly in native IFC. You can see different task relationships being created, like finish to start, start to start, and so on, and lag times. And naturally, the 3D modeled elements can be related to the tasks as well. IFC also supports construction resources, so we can store cost rates and productivity rates for labor and equipment. These can be parametrically linked to schedules, so the task durations can be calculated from labor productivity. And this also updates any IFC cost schedules that are linked to it, and you can balance costs, time, and resources. And naturally, this can all be visualized with a variety of colors, animations, and Gantt chart styles. Facility management data, as defined by standards like Kobe, can be extracted into different formats like spreadsheets. We also have integrations with open data schemas like Brick Schema, which is used in BMCS systems. So in this example, we're linking IFC distribution elements to sensors, and these elements can be referenced in Brick Schema and linked to time series databases. There are a lot more cool demos out there, but I'll just show two more. Here's a sketch scene which contains not just solids, but 3D curves and non-manifold geometry. With native IFC, this type of scene can be a BIM model. So here's what it looks like in Revit. And in this example, the building is actually generated. The user can draw boxes to represent spaces, and the spaces are used to generate buildings and cities. All the resultant IFC spaces know their spatial function, and all the doors, windows, and walls are natively stored in IFC. In this example, this approach goes through an evolutionary solver and scores the spaces with respect to the values in a pattern language, which is an architectural book. The software we're showing here is a combination of three free software, Topologic, Homemaker, and the Blender BIM add-on. So Topologic provides topological analysis to determine the space connectivity, Homemaker then generates the designs in native IFC. And finally, the BlenderBim add-on visualizes this and allows native authoring. The IFC OpenShell and BlenderBim add-on software that's been showcased throughout this presentation is completely free and open source. 
And this is super important because today's talk is not just about cool technologies. It's also about a cultural shift that our industry is going through. And the term free software, it's actually nothing to do with cost or money. It's actually about four types of freedoms for all of us, the software users. The first freedom is that we must be able to use the software for any purpose. Second, you should be able to study and modify the workings of the software. So if the software doesn't do what you want it to, you can fix it. Or if you want to understand why things are the way they are, you can investigate. The third freedom is that you can redistribute the software. So if somebody doesn't have access to these tools, you can share it with them. And our industry has a huge disparity in digital adoption. So this freedom helps level the playing field and raise the standards that we need for smarter cities. And fourth, whenever you make any improvements or change the way the software works, you can redistribute this change to the public. So if 10 people from 10 companies each make one improvement, the entire world benefits. And this is an incredible multiplier effect to benefit our entire industry. You'll notice some similarities between the objectives of Open BIM and the freedoms of free software but the focuses are slightly different. OpenBIM focuses on the freedom of data, whereas open source focuses on the freedom of the users of the data. And this freedom is applied using a free software license. So whereas most other software licenses restrict your freedoms, a free software license preserves your freedom. And this means it's not possible to buy the Blender BIM add-on or shut it down now or in the future. So all the free software that our industry is collectively building will be free for our entire industry forever. So most of what I've shown you today is alpha software. There are a lot of incomplete features and things are changing very fast. But I hope you're excited by what you can see and you can see a new way of working with ISE natively. And there are over 150 developers who have volunteered to contribute. And it's starting to reach a point where you can deliver a small architectural project end to end with native ISE. We also know that it's already playing various roles in large projects like hospitals, train stations, and skyscrapers, not for end-to-end -end delivery, but in auditing, fixing, and certain bespoke system integrations. And perhaps the biggest rollout yet is the Hinkley Point C nuclear power plant in the UK. And there are also a number of universities starting to teach this and hundreds of results in academic papers. Just like IFC OpenShell, there are also projects like XBIM and ISCJS that allow anybody to work with native IFC. And there are lots of communities out there doing incredible stuff, and I've only had time today to explore just one in detail. One of these communities is known as the Open Source Architecture Community, or OSArch. It's a fantastic entry point to discover what's out there with resources like forums, chat rooms, meetups, wiki, and more. It's a community of architects, engineers, and construction professionals who are collectively working to make open source solutions available for everybody. And this shift to native IFC and open source technologies is not easy or fast. It's a foundational change that relies on the native digital literacy of our entire industry to speak the same digital language. It's also a change that relies on a culture of sharing ideas and solutions freely for everyone's benefit. These technologies are being developed incredibly quickly. Imagine how different our industry would be if we invested in accessible open source systems 10 years ago. But right now is the chance for all of us, small or large, whether or not you can write code, implement policies, teach others, publish research, write contracts, everyone can make a difference. So by working together, let's build a new digital built environment that we have full control over. Thanks for listening.